Uh, we are going to be talking about uh, what we call Microsoft Graph Data Connect for SharePoint. Uh, you might have heard of it as Project Archimedes when we were in early previews. And uh, what is this about? Th this is about analytics and insights for SharePoint, OneDrive, and other uh, Microsoft 365 products. And uh, you might be asking, oh, I already have access to information for analytics and insights using the admin portal or using PowerShell or the Graph API. Uh, why do I need something different here? Well, the main concern here is when you're trying to get information about your own uh, OneDrive and SharePoint uh, in your tenant, you will, uh, if you have, say, 100, 200 sites, that's pretty straightforward with one good PowerShell command, you can get all kinds of fun stuff going on. But uh, for larger tenants, tenants that have say 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 sites, it gets very complicated to get a consistent data set out of SharePoint using these tools, right? Because the, it's a lot of data. So you, in PowerShell, you start to get things that take uh, sometimes days, and I heard stories of folks that are trying to do this, and it takes weeks to get large data sets uh, using PowerShell. And uh, with the Graph API, you might need to uh, start implementing paging, and you might get throttling. And uh, we are now trying to use Microsoft Graph Data Connect to get you to that state where you can handle very large tenants and pull data from those. So uh, that's the number one uh, new thing in MTDC is you can get complete data sets for SharePoint Teams, AD Exchange, and you can get that with many uh, objects. For instance, uh, hundreds of thousands of sites, maybe even millions of sites. Uh, there are some large tenants out there. Uh, and you can get that with one request. You put uh, one pipeline request, it goes and processes and drops the data in a storage account that you specify. And uh, if you want to get a full list of all your sites, that's uh, as straightforward as it is. You, of course, need the whole uh, infrastructure uh, to be properly approved. Right? So you have to have consent for that particular app ID to pull this data because this is designed for uh, large enterprises, but you will be able to do this. And we provide the necessary uh, samples, schema, templates, and all that. So in summary, what are we doing with Microsoft Graph Data Connect? So we are delivering directly to an Azure account in, that's owned by your tenant, a uh, large data set. And we have uh, a, a list of data sets that are related to SharePoint and OneDrive here. You have sites, you have groups, you have permissions, you have even files, right? So imagine how powerful this is. You can go in and say, I want a complete list of all the files in this tenant. And uh, for large tenants, we're talking tens of millions, hundreds of millions, even billions of files. And this solution has delivered uh, this to, to many tenants already. So this is really enabling you to pull in all that rich data and then using Azure Data Tools, you can uh, produce analytics, you can actually and uh, really uh, get insights out of uh, the data set. So the main differences here, we focus on these scenarios, right? So we have scenario for security, we have a scenario for capacity, we have a scenario for health. But basically what we're doing, we're enabling you to pull all that data, bring it to Azure Storage, and use tools like Power BI to uh, show the data to summarize to create dashboards and you can use all the richness of azure data tools to 
to build the solution. Uh, now, we, we, we want to emphasize that we are delivering this as data to the tenant. So it's not a ready to go report, it is a data set. And that data set will require you to have someone on the other side to catch that, right? But uh, once you get the gist of it, you'll see that you can produce really interesting uh, reports, dashboards, and, and get a lot of insight. So to, to kind of make the point, right? So uh, what we deliver is what's on the right here. So this is a sample permission data set. Uh, object. So you see here the, that this is a permission for contribute to a file, right? And this is the name of the file. And then you can see who has permissions. So the shared with here, it's a security group called Project X1. And this security group has four people in it. And you know who created it, who uh, last modified it, and all that. So using the data on the right, you can produce the dashboard that's on the left. And what can you do with this? So I like to speak of this as a mechanism to get this rich data and to be able to answer questions about your tenant, about the data that you have, right? So what are the largest uh, sites that you have, right? What are uh the the sites that have more than that have were created more than one year ago or maybe what is what are the top sites that haven't had any new uh change in the last six months right uh where are the large files in your tenant uh what uh file extinctions are being used all these are part of the capacity scenario uh, in a similar fashion, we have the Sync Health data set that has one object for each uh, device in the company. So you can look at, are all these devices syncing? Is folder backup enabled, right? Uh, if they are syncing, are they syncing successfully or are there errors happening? Because, of course, uh, you want to understand when a sync client is not completing the, the sync process, you might get uh, stranded data. So that's another scenario, sync health. A very, very popular scenario, security, right? Especially now with Copilot being able to do these uh, magical uh, searches and finding data everywhere, it respects the permissions that the user has. But how can you analyze those permissions, right? How can you identify oversharing or maybe sharing to external people? Or maybe you want to see if there is something that has a sensitivity label of uh, confidential, but at the same time is being shared with an Outlook.com account external to the company. So with this information, you can get all, the, it can answer all these kinds of questions. And I said, we don't uh, provide reports, we provide data, but to help you get going, we have uh, templates available to you. And this will help you, for instance, create a pipeline in Synapse to summarize and aggregate the data, for instance. And the information over sharing has this, gets information about groups, joins with information from sites and permissions, and then, produces this uh, richer data set that has all the details that you can then use with a Power BI uh, dashboard. And we provide sample dashboards that you can, you can go and use. Same thing for uh, capacity. We have a template for capacity where it extracts sites, it extracts files, it does some calculations for file extinctions, and then again provides a Power BI sample that you can use to, to pull that data in. So uh, we're talking about very, very powerful capabilities. Uh, and this is built through what we call a consumption-based model, a pay-as-you-go, if you will. And uh, it is billed at 75 cents per thousand objects. 
So for instance, if you have a tenant that has 50,000 sites and you want to pull a list of all the sites in the tenant, that will cost you less than $38 to pull that data in. And it's consumption based. So if you pull a lot of data, if you pull it every week, every week you get charged. We do provide something uh, called Delta. So if you want, you can do a Delta um, data set that gets you just the difference uh, from a previous pool. So for instance, last week I got a full list of all my sites. Then this week I say, okay, so get me a, get me a list of things that change since I last pulled that data. So it will show you just uh, sites that are new, deleted, or changed. So this will allow you to pull less data and you can keep up to date without having to pull the full data set every time. So in summary, right? So this is about giving you data in an Azure account that you own uh, for uh, analytics and insight on SharePoint and OneDrive. And uh, we pulled the entire uh, set of SharePoint sites so if you have Teams connected sites, you you get those SharePoint sites as well. Uh, even SharePoint embedded is another type of site, and you can get information about those. Not only what are the sites that are embedded, but also the files inside, the permissions granted, and all that. So very powerful stuff. Three scenarios we mentioned: security, capacity, and health. Uh, we have templates for oversharing and capacity. We are available in 15 regions. I list them all there. And we have more advanced capabilities like deltas, column filtering, row filtering, sampling. Uh, and if you want to get started, uh, just take a look at our main site at aka.ms slash SharePoint data. And you can see all the details there. We have a ton of content that help you get started, including step by steps uh, to get you going. Right. So uh, this is like the big overview of what we are uh, doing. I wanted to spend some time just showing a few details about how uh, this works. So let me uh, switch here to demo mode and. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is where you enable this, right? So you go here in your Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and you will find Microsoft Graph Data Connect here. So this is the first thing you have to do uh, to enable it is turn on Microsoft Graph Data Connect, and also make sure you check the box for SharePoint Online and OneDrive. Uh, there are uh, more steps to configure uh, permissions. So you have to configure, oh, let me just, uh, for instance, storage. So you have to have a storage account that will receive this, but then after you receive this information, what you see is these will be basically, uh, JSON files that are available to you here after you run uh, a pipeline. And you pull those into uh, Power BI. So for instance, here, you will see an example. Uh, if you go here to the sites data set, you will see a list of all these All these data columns here. So you see information here about the site, site type, site URL, site name, all this. Uh, and you can use this to create uh, a nice dashboard. For instance, this is sites by age. You can also have sites by last date changed. So this is basically just pulling data from sites and visualizing here. Right. Uh, it would be interesting to show also uh, how this data get pulled. So basically, 
the request for data is something that you do using uh, one of the Azure data tools. You can use Data Factory, you can use Synapse, you can use Microsoft Fabric. I'll, I'll show you an example here with Synapse. So you basically create a pipeline. This pipeline has uh, a task. This task is to copy data. So basically you specify here what is uh, the source. So you specify here what are the what is the data set that you want to pull, right? And then what are the columns that you want? And you also specify the sync, meaning where will this data go, right? And you can see here it's going to Azure Data Lake Storage. You specify the path, and that's how the data lands there. And then once you specify this copy data task, you basically trigger it. You can trigger it immediately, or you can schedule it. So you can say every Friday at 5 p.m., run this, and uh, it will land the data, will pull the data from SharePoint and land the data in your own storage account. So obviously there, there's some consent that you need to set up, and uh, we can go over that as well. In the step-by-step, -step, we have all those uh, details available. And once you do it, I can go ahead and say trigger now. So what happens, it runs this pipeline. You can monitor it. So I have one that I have uh, done before. Uh, you can definitely see the steps. This one succeeded. You can see here that it pulled data from uh, Office 365 and landed into Azure Data Lake Storage. And from there, you basically can uh, access through Power BI. So Power BI can connect to uh, an Azure Storage account uh, and uh, get you going. So. Um, there, there's a lot more uh, detail to, to to be discussed, but this is in general a, a kind of a big picture overview of Microsoft Graph Data Connect and the data sets that you want. If you want to get more detail and get started, uh, go to aka.ms slash SharePoint data, and uh, there you will find uh, details about the scenarios that we discussed uh, about each of the templates, steps by step by step for Synapse, step by step for Microsoft Fabric as well. So uh, you can uh, learn uh, more and start playing with this one. So uh, there'll be a big picture overview of MGDC.